So I have pulled up the project from last time. Um, we have our gallery scene. I have my message. It says my gallery that I'm adding to the scene using viz.addText. We're going to do more with that later on when we kind of get some actions going on when we do our uh, grab our objects. And then we added our art one and art two, which are already in the environment. I want to go into my environment and I want to uh, review something with you about adding an object. So I'm going to go into my gallery scene. So here I am. I have all these different objects here. I'm going to jump right to Art 2. Remember, we labeled it down here. I also named the scene Art 2. But if I double click on this where I have it labeled underneath Sketchfab Model, Art 2, where that little gear is, it takes me right inside my museum. And I can now move around a lot better. I'm going to add uh, a beach ball because, you know, why not? Let's have a beach ball in our museum. So I'm going to go to File, Add, and I'm going to look in my Resources folder, which comes with Wizard, and I'm going to look for the beach ball. And there it is, beach ball. I'm going to open it. Now, you'll notice when it opens it, it puts it right at our starting spot, which is what we want it, but we don't want it sitting there on the floor. We want to move it to a different spot. You'll notice though, I have when I go to click on it, I can't drag it. There's no draggable tools in order to move the location of my beach ball out of the floor. We can fix that. We're going to go and click on Create, and then click on this item here in the menu that says Transform. That gives us an empty, tr empty Transform object, and we can name it if we want. Beach ball transform. And we're going to put the beach ball underneath the beach ball transform just by clicking it and dragging it. And now we get all of the transform tools for our beach ball. So I can move this anywhere I want into our world like that. So if you ever end up with any other object that seems to be missing the transform controls, that's how you can go ahead and add those transform controls. I think I may have gone too far. Oh, there it is, maybe. And I want to jump right to my beach ball so I can kind of see where we're at. It looks like we're in our beach ball case. There we go. Okay, great. So now I have my beach ball in there in my world. It's got a name that happens to match the file, so we'll just call it the beach ball. Save that. Got to remember the name. And if I want to add it to the environment, I would just say the beach ball equals env dot get child. the beach ball. Did I use caps? Let me go double check. Okay, the beach ball, lowercase t, capital B, capital B. There we go, that's great. So now when I run my program, I'm gonna get the beach ball added into my environment. But suppose I didn't wanna go through and position the beach ball by hand and do all those kinds of things. I just wanted to make it easier and just tell the beach ball in code where it should go. So what we can do is we can add in other resources just by referencing the file name. So I've added in a new child. Notice the command is different. It's not env.getChild. I'm not getting the child or the object from the environment already. I'm adding the child, viz.addChild. So we're using the viz operator, that's the viz object, uh, the same thing we do when we do our import viz. It's called a static class because we're using the name of the class in order to call the method. And we're gonna add 
a new child into the environment that's not there. So here is the file. I have a cool little Spider-Man I'm going to put in. There's this file name. I can set the position. Now the position is a list. It's a um, X, Y, and Z value list. But we do have to say POS equals. That's one of the requirements of the method. We have to tell the computer that we're going to assign the position to that list. And then the scale is also a list, because it turns out Spider-Man is actually really giant in our picture world here. So we have to reduce the scale by 0 0.015 all the way across the board. So this command will take a file and add it into our environment at that position with that scale. So that's one way that we're using lists, here by using the position and using the scale. We could also create a dictionary for our beach ball. Now, and add it into our program the same way that we added um, the Spider-Man, only we can reference the values in the dictionary. So let's look at this beach ball dictionary. I called it beach ball dictionary. I have a file name, which is our resources beachball.osgb. I have a position, which is our list, uh, position 110. I have our scale, the beach ball is the right size. And then I've added something to my dictionary, something I couldn't do before. I've added a title. Later on, when we start creating a gallery, we might want to add in other things like author and a short description about our beach ball or whatever object we're looking at when we add it to our environments. So that way, when the user maybe touches it or grabs it, they get a description on their screen that says what this thing is. So I've added the beach ball in two different ways. The first way is I did viz.addchild and I added it the same way we added Spider-Man. I put the resources file in and then I set the position with a list to one zero and then I set the scale. But the other way of adding it is by referencing the dictionary. Now remember, we reference the dictionary by key names. So I'm gonna put the beach ball dictionary and put the file name there. Then I'm gonna say the beach ball dictionary and put the position there. And I'm gonna say the beach ball dictionary and I'm gonna put the scale there. Now suppose I wanted to put in a third beach ball, but I wanted to reference it by using the dictionary but I wanted it to go to a different location. So I'm gonna call this beach ball three. And I wanted to put it in a different location. I could just go in here and instead of saying position equals beach ball dictionary position, I could go in and manually add in a new position. Let's say two comma three comma zero. And put the beach ball in a new spot while still using the same file name and same scale. So we, we don't have to use just the dictionary. We could go ahead and use um, kind of a combination, so to speak, of using the dictionary vari variable values and typing in our own list directly. I also decided to change the message on the screen and take advantage of the fact that I've used the dictionary. So text.message is now going to be the title of the uh, beach ball. So it should say beach ball in our message on our screen using our text object that we created way up here. Text equals viz dot add text. The viz object has got a lot of methods that we're going to be exploring. Okay, so now we've created all of our objects. They're in our environment once we've loaded it. We now need to build our grabbable objects list. Now, last time we just assigned it. We said art one comma art two and just assigned our two objects into our grabbable objects list. But we could use the methods that come along with our list and say grabbable objects dot append and add Spider-Man into our list and we can add in beach ball two. And maybe we wanna add in the third beach ball. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna add in beach ball three. 
And we could also add in a new object that doesn't have a name yet. Uh, that's not assigned a name at all. We could just say add and add in the raw code for adding a child, listing the file, listing the position, listing the scale. If we wanted to, we could use the dictionary to add it. So there's lots of options for adding things into the list. It doesn't just have to be exactly the same way that we're typing it on the screen. And then we're going to do our grab our object using our VizConnect. We're setting our objects, items from the list. This takes a list. And again, we could just write out the list here if we wanted to. But we have it stored in this um, list variable name. And then I did this other thing, which is kind of fun, just so I can kind of keep track of things. I individually addressed the items of the grabbable objects, items two, three, and four, and I set their colors to red, blue, and green. Um, let's see how many items we have now. We got zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we have indexed up to five. So I think maybe we'll add in another color. for item five. We're going to leave, I think Spider-Man is zero, one, two. So Spider-Man is item two. So we're going to make Spider-Man red. And we're going to do a beach ball of blue, green. I think there might be a keyword for orange. We'll find out shortly. So these are constants that are built into Vizard. So we don't have to remember the hexadecimal code that means red or that means blue that means green that means orange we could just type in the color and this addresses the individual child object that we created it whether it was already there or whether we um, created it by adding it to our grabbable objects list and each of those child objects that are in our environment have a dot color property associated with them and gives us the ability using this dot color method to change the color of the individual object. So there's a lot going on there, but uh, the most important part is I want you to see that we're indexing the individual children within our list that we created of grabbable objects using those techniques that we learned in the previous lessons. So let's start this. It may take a second to load because there's a lot being loaded. Okay, so now we have loaded our world. I'm going to make it full screen. And we can see there's Spider-Man. There is the ball that we added to our environment. I'm going to get down to its level a little bit here. Notice it's not grabbable. We did not add that ball to our grabbable list. We just added it to the environment. There are our different balls that we added. And we still have our original objects. And we can grab our ball and walk it around the room and drop it over here. There's our other ball up in the, in the sky. Oh, it looks the orange did work. So we have our orange ball. So we have all of our beach balls kind of floating around our gallery here. A little weird that they're beach balls, but I think it's kind of fun. You can see we can grab that one. Move that one around. Maybe Spider-Man wants a beach ball. Oops. There we go. Let's give Spider-Man a beach ball. That's nice. Now he can play with the beach ball. So you got to find moving the beach balls around or put whatever else you want to add to your environment. We're starting to get some power now that we can add things to the environment in code. One of the next things we're going to be looking at moving forward is how do we start getting some things to move on our environment? Um, how do we get to make that happen? So that is all I have for you today. I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time.